Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and our new series here in Iowa. We are on the banks of the Mississippi River and uh, this farm here, we are a bit inland. So this is UMRV, Upper Mississippi River Valley by DJ Modding. It was just released a few days ago, <clears throat> yesterday I believe actually. So, I figured, I mean, I've been saying for a while that this is a map that I want to do a little series on. So, uh, just looking around and seeing what the other content creators are doing and kind of want to do something a little bit different. So, we did pick this farm here. Uh, it is located, it is the Black Acres Farm. And it is probably the most east farm you can get, yeah. So it's in the middle middle east part of the map here. Uh, it's supposed to be a Angus Angus farm, and that's kind of what we're doing. So this is our farm, Black Acres Farm, since 2021. So we're relatively new around here. Picked this farm up on a. pretty cheap deal it's from a farm family that uh, you know the the owners of it uh, passed away and we they kids didn't want to use it anymore or didn't want to farm so we were never involved and didn't want to be involved so here we are we built up on it a little bit uh, this was just kind of a small cattle operation but we've built on it, we've invested some money into it, and this is it. So we'll kind of show you around a little bit. Uh, do a little equipment tour here. Wasn't sure if I wanted to do a, you know, set up the farm type of thing. Uh, if you haven't watched Kadirk's video on his farm, he's up on the big dairy farm, and he did a really cool video where he, like, set the set the farm up and the equipment up as he went in the first video and I thought that was pretty cool and I thought maybe I would do that but I did a lot of editing and, and building onto this farm um, so there was some money that I needed to add and whatnot but we did start out completely from uh, on farm manager mode at a million and a half I took did more money to build the farm so that didn't go into the money that we have here as well as to buy the farm that didn't go in either so all of this money that we have the million and a half is all equipment and extra land cost besides the main farm that we're on here so any extra fields or anything all that had to be taken out of the uh one and a half mil so we have some equipment on lease we have some leased fields so um, actually all of our fields are leased besides the main field here on this farm that's kind of on the northeast, north-northeast side of the farm, so. We'll start with the equipment tour. Uh, I guess we can start out here. Uh, the little intro portion of the video is actually going to be recorded after I do this, so. Uh, once we come back on the next episode we might be in the field harvesting but uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure how that's all gonna work out but I wanted to record this get a little equipment intro farm intro and then uh, I needed to do a little montage type thing for the uh, intro of the video so we're gonna be doing this after so it's gonna be a kind of little reversed but we'll start here uh, this is uh, the Mac Don that I have converted and uh, Touched up a little bit, so uh, this is a MacDon 40 foot, I believe I have here. I have in the pack is going to be a 35 foot and a 40 foot. Everything's working, uh, effects work, the, thing, the reel moves up and down, all the animations, everything. PTO hooks up, color selectable there on the uh, logo there. So hoping to get that out to you guys in the next few days, and I actually will be. So. This will be for you guys to play with here soon. 
Uh, we'll start here, or next we have our uh, farm truck here. It's an F-250. I'm a Ford guy. Super duty. Do like my Ford, so we got like kind of a burgundy Super duty here. Just says our farm truck. Uh, might be getting a fuel tank in the back. We might take the um, toolbox out, throw a fuel tank in the back at some point. Also just got some logos ordered, so we might slap a farm logo there on the side. Thinking about changing the uh, farm logo there. We kind of kept the previous owner's farm logo that's on that sign. Kind of goofy, but uh, we'll, we might be changing it up a bit. So, uh, yeah, There's our work truck. Here's kind of the workhorse of the farm. Uh, the 8910. Big grapple bucket there, front loader. Gonna do a lot of the cattle work here, so she's a nice one. Stop over here. Here's our uh, hay buster for bedding with straw. Up into this barn here. Nice old barn here, but this kind of holds our hay and equipment. This is our. Uh, Case IH RB455 silage special with the silage additive tank there by New Holland. So that's going to be our round baler for baling up hay and straw and all that good stuff. We're going to be running Vermeer equipment. Uh, Vermeer is based out of Iowa, I do believe, so it kind of felt right to run some Vermeer. But we got our tether here. We have our Windrower RB2800. And then in this next door we have our fuel trailer that has uh, fuel and def as well in the back. So we can fill our machines that have def. We don't have many machines. I believe our combine is the only one that runs def. Uh, sitting back here in this little alleyway is our Sooner uh, livestock trailer. Nice little trailer there. You may have seen it on our other series on Ashton. We'll kind of work our way through the barn now. We got our case age drill, air drill for seeding beans and grains. Might be doing some sorghum as well on this save. It's a nice barn here with the uh, hydraulic doors. We come in here, we have our Challenger SP-185C self-propelled mower. We do have a GPS system installed on it, diamond tread tires. Uh, this thing is nice because it uh, conditions the grass as you go over it, so you don't actually have to tet it. Which makes me wonder why I have a tetter. <laughs> but, you know... You know, think of those things when you're setting up the farm, I guess. Uh, next, we have our old forage harvester here. It's a John Deere 5830. The local dealership around here is a Deere dealer, so they had this sitting in the in the lot used, and uh, we don't do a whole lot of silage around here. Just all the only silage that we're doing is that we're, we fill up those harvestors to use over the winter. For cattle feed, just makes things easier. If it's uh, snow, is pretty bad. It's, it's uh, not fun trying to dig yourself out of some bales and whatnot. Um, so we are we do do some silage to feed our cattle over winter out of those uh, staves. Uh, so we don't need anything huge. Next, we got the best way sprayer. It's probably one of the they have it on. The Ashton series as well, but it's a good American trail pull type sprayer. I wanted to kind of do a self propelled sprayer, but it, with the money that we had, we couldn't really afford that. So we got the best way 1200 here. Uh, 27 meter booms, I believe, which I can't think of what that is in feet at this moment. Here's the. Uh, tractor that's going to be doing all of our planting and spraying and seeding and possibly even on the grain cart so it's going to be probably our most used tractor here in the fields 
It is a Challenger MT-75 755B. About 350 horse here. Hop inside. And fire it up. Got the GPS system hooked up here. It's a Challenger GPS system. Got the CB radio. Got our planter cedar monitors here by Kinsey. So that is our and our sprayer uh, box there. So it's pretty much hooked up for everything here uh, during harvest season, which we haven't installed this yet. We just got this uh, bought. It was uh, another monitor that is uh, tells us our what we have for weight in our grain cart so we might if we're using this for grain cart I'm not sure if we're gonna yet we'll have this installed in here as well but we might throw it on the uh, other tractor that I'll show you here in a bit that could run grain cart as well which is our tillage tractor uh, in here we have our combine just getting service before we go out it's a 680B uh, cat diesel power engine as well as the uh, tractor there. We like our cat engines and our combines. So this is also a combine that I will be planning on releasing to you guys eventually. But things need read UDIM. I'm gonna read UDIM the feeder house here and the PTO shaft at least. Um, I think new rims as well. Maybe make the fan there an actual mesh. So, yeah, there's some things I want to do to it, not just straight con convert it and just, uh, you know, send it out, but I want to kind of put my stamp on it if I can. So, yeah, this is going to be our combine. It's uh, kind of my first time actually getting it tested out, so it'll be fun testing it out. So that's kind of it for what's over here as we walk across over here we'll start on the left side of our cold storage this is a new building to the farm once we bought this farm we felt like there wasn't enough storage for the kind of farm that we're trying to run so we built this here's our tillage implements we got I don't remember what the number is on it but it's a John Deere ripper slash chisel. And then we have our Landall. We have our Landall 33 foot disc here that also has a mulching function on the back, which is nice. Uh, this ripper, or chisel plow, sorry, it does have a mulching function as well, which is great. You don't have to mulch whenever we, uh, whichever tillage implement we are using. So in here, in this cold storage here, we have our Gehringhoff 12 row corn head. This is a leased piece, since it runs about $180,000 for the head. Uh, I guess we'll go through this. This is our 16 row Case IH planter, 2150. It is, um, a lease as well, very expensive, about $250,000 for this. Move over to the trucks here, we have our Peterbilt. Uh, this is, I like running this truck, this configuration on games because this Pete right here is one that I drive in real life for the farm that I work on and it's pretty much this exact look. So it's got the green fenders on it and uh, with a white main body there it's pretty cool so uh, but this one runs a single hopper mower grain trailer we got our Timty uh, double hopper 50 foot trailer here on the Peterbilt cab over I really like this truck and farm sim so I don't know, I was just feeling the Peterbilt on this farm so this one's pretty cool about 5 580 horse on this one so this one only runs about 400. So this one's got uh, the cab over's got a lot more power than uh, than this beat here. I think it's a 379 
don't quote me on that. I don't know my truck models very well. So uh, here we have our Vermeer bale stacker for round bales. Uh, we will be doing that as we are running Maze Plus on this save. And with it being a Let's Play style, bale handling takes a long time. So I was kind of thinking about time, uh, how that's going to work. So this is a... We are going to be using this for our bale stacking. And with the amount of cows we're running, we're going to need a lot of hay. So, uh, Which also means we might need to actually leave some more ground as well. But we might be buying in some bales to start. So, uh, Here we have our two 28-foot, I believe, Meyer Forge boxes. They are the straight body there or whatever you want to call it they're not the the hard ones to back in and you know you all know what i'm talking about so they have a front and rear unload in case we do ever move to a bunker style system for feeding here is our feed truck we move all over the place we have quite a spread out feeding uh, system so uh, with our commodity shed being right here and so we might be loading hay over on the yard and then coming over loading our commodities and then going back over to feed our cows. So it's kind of nice to just have it on a truck and uh, less loading. So we do have a Peterbilt here uh, feed truck, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is our grain cart. It's a JNM1 or 1051. So... 3,700 liter capacity if you're talking in farm sim standards here on crawly tracks. We like our tracks here on this farm, so. And then here's our big dog here. This is our Challenger MT855B. It's another cat engine by Challenger. About 450 horse on this one. 460 maybe, so has GPS on this one as well might be this is the one I was talking about that we might be running the grain cart on we'll see I don't know if how it's gonna work with doing tillage we might be doing tillage like immediately after we harvest so we might have the this one tied up so I don't know we'll see here we have an old new Holland 8340 uh, two-wheel and uh, our hay buster grinder bin there for grinding our commodities if needed, our hay, our straw, all that stuff. This is our commodity shed here. And our deer 544K loader, payloader here with the uh, grapple bucket. So that's going to be used a lot for feeding. So... It's nice. It's just released. I will try and post links to uh, these mods in the description so you guys can have that. Or I might have a mods list in my Discord. So uh, I'll hop into. We'll, we'll hop over across the road and uh, I'll check the truck down to show you guys the feedlot. So on the original build of this farm, through these gates on the north side of the farm, it's just field. But, uh, yeah, I was feeling like doing a feedlot here, so these feedlot uh, pens are, are by Lazy E. So, uh, as you see there, we have our H&S manure spreader. Wanted to go bigger, but we just don't have the funds for it. So we have two big feedlots here. And then as we come down, it's kind of all on a slope. So as we come down, we have two more here in these kind of landing areas here that we are going to be storing bales. I think we're going to be wrapping bales and, you know, any kinds of bales there. So we have that. And then over there are our bins. So we have direct access to our bins through here if we want to, or we can drive around, which probably if we're going to be loading our trucks, we'll probably have them drive around. Um, 
we'll figure out a way that we can create a turnaround type of thing. We don't really want our semi trucks to be driving through a feedlot, especially on this steep of a hill. So, as we feed, though, we'll be feeding and we'll drive around here. This is kind of our route around back up into the yard. There's a cut through there in case the feed. We don't need to, so we don't need to go all the way down to turn around, so. So we'll come back in here, but yeah, this is our grass pasture there, and then over there where we cut it in two, there's another smaller grass field there, so. Come up through here, and then we're back into the main yard, so. That is the tour of the farm. Might extend this video, might not, might show some work, but yeah, so that is it. So I appreciate you guys for watching again. I hope you guys enjoy this series. It's going to be more of a let's play, not, not a little bit different than the Richland series. Uh, probably not as much, you know, role play in there. It's just going to be a legit let's play where, you know, if we're going to use course play, we're going to use course play. It's not going to be Steve is going to run the tractor type of thing, you know what I mean? So, uh, then you guys can kind of learn at least if you're new to course play too, and I can kind of show you guys how that works and whatnot like that. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.